friends, this is the Be Real Babe podcast, a place where your average babes come together to talk about life stresses, messes, and successes. A place where being yourself is the ultimate goal, where your opinion, your story, and your individual experience matters. Join me, your host B, and my guests for real and raw talks every week, laying it all out there so we can all help each other learn more, grow deeper, and evolve collectively. Now keep in mind, as a disclaimer, no one here is an expert and no one is giving any advice. This is strictly our opinions, thoughts, feelings, and for entertainment purposes only. Now with that being said, it's time. So grab your drink, grab your joint, and let's jump right in. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Be Real Babe podcast. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by the show today. I hope that you have a good time. And if you're a returning listener, watcher, supporter, thank you guys so, so much from the bottom of my heart for coming back time and time again. For those that don't know me, my name is Brandy. I am the host of the show. And today, you guys, we're on episode 189, season 7 finale. Woo, woo, woo. I cannot believe it. Uh, you guys, I was going to end it at 190. OCD kicked in. Summer's kicked in. Your girl is getting burnt out. So we're going to end at 189 and start the season at 190. Isn't it kind of funny when you're like obsessed about numbers and how you hold on to things like that? And then I was like, oh, do I do a what the actual internet part five? And like, or do I bounce that out for last season and then start at five? Because now I'm starting at six and there was only nine of what in the... Oh, you guys, sometimes I trap myself in these number things way too much. But anyways, 189 season finale. And I have a very, very special guest that you guys know and love so much. And I'm so glad she is back joining me for the last episode. And who knows what's going to be for the next season. We shall see. Super excited. But I am just filled. My cup is filled from having an amazing beginning to summer, finishing the season. I do just want to take a second and thank you guys as we're wrapping up. I did not do that as well in the episode itself because I was just so excited to chatting with my girl. Um, But you guys, thank you so much for all the support in season seven. I was super nervous doing this by myself, um, even though I know I'm not by myself, but you know what I mean? Being the only person to make decisions, you know, how imposter syndrome comes in as an artist, as a creator all the time. And so I was super nervous, but I feel so much better now that I have one full season below my belt. I still have three more to go with the promise of 10 seasons, and who knows? I might continue on past season 10, but I just want to do a minimum of 10, and yeah, I'm super excited to um, finish up this season and get started immediately planning the next season, even though I'm going to be taking a break um, from recording for a month and probably about six six to eight weeks breaks of making content uh, for the shows and maybe just rearranging that a bit. But you guys, season eight is going to look a lot like season seven. I'm going to keep the same segments in. I did a poll and all around seems like everyone enjoys, uh, for the most part, all the different parts of the seasons when we're having the be real with, where we're talking to an individual about a bunch of topics, being real about where we focus in on one topic with an individual, going to the what the actual internets where I just do some sometimes fun, sometimes heavy, sometimes dark parts where also I want to in the next season talk a little bit more about cults because I took a break (laughs) last season. That was super dark, but y'all, there's a lot more cults that have been popping up. So definitely going to have those types of topics come back uh, as well as keeping up with Canada because not only for myself, I think it's important that we all talk about it and it also helps me keep accountable to looking into these things as well as everything else else that we talk about so very excited for season eight very excited for the summer break but like I mentioned in the last episode a little bit nervous about starting season eight because that means that this depressing winter months are ahead of us but that is not right now as you can see I got tan I had a little bit of my first uh, summer vacation so I'm beyond excited guys and just a reminder though if you are listening on YouTube rumble make sure to like subscribe turn on notifications and comment for engagement if you can it helps me out a lot you guys um, as I'm rebuilding everything your guys's engagement helps so much I know it's hard I know it's annoying I know most of us are sitting here listening while we're at work or we're driving and we're like girly we don't have time I totally get it but when you do have time when you guys can help send me a message write a comment leave an emoji whatever it shows Uh, that you guys like the shows outside of just listening to it helps me as well and if you want to find me on social media you can find me on instagram and pinterest and tiktok at the be real babe sometimes be a babe podcast or facebook at the be real collective as i said i'm rebuilding all of these social media platforms so if you can go over there and follow me that is very helpful and if you are i missed to say if you are listening to audio on spotify or apple you can also follow and turn on notifications and 
leave a review there it makes me so happy every time i see a new one you guys it means so much even if it's just putting a star review literally lights up my life but i'm gonna shut up say thank you one more time i'll miss you guys for the month that i'll be gone but i will be here on social media if you want to be a part of the show if you want to share your own story if you have a topic you want me to talk about please shoot me a message on any of those and i will get to it and put it on the list for season eight but We'll shut the fuck up because I'm so excited for you guys to hear this episode with my last guest of the season, one of my favorite human beings on planet Earth. Let's go. All right, babes, it's time to get on to the show. And with me today, I have the absolute most special guest with me. I'd like to welcome back my babe, Kate, to the show. Hi. Hi, y'all. <laughs> I'm so excited. I didn't want to do a big intro. I was like, I don't know. Oh. I've been keeping it in for days and weeks now. I'm so glad so you're back. So exciting. Yeah. So exciting. I'm so pumped. I'm so, so excited. Fun. Every time I end a season, I like sit back and I think about that season and then I start going through all the different seasons and watch the growth through the show, you know, yeah. like, and, and, and us as individuals, cause we started this together. So yes. to me, it's like little paths of time where I look back at like our growth as humans and on the show too. I don't know if that's something that like you cycle through. <laughs> yeah, season. I totally, totally. And, like everything is just been so crazy it's been a year since it's been a year guys since we've seen it has it's face. been a hot minute since we've been on here together and it's so nice to be back it's like it came at a perfect time where i'm like not really busy you know like cash is gone for summer um bruce had to be locked out because he will go in the closet and then like pop out and it's like an accordion style closet like it's yes. really strange like yep. vinyl or whatever so yeah, yeah and like, it moves yeah we have to keep it open for him because I was like, oh, like he will just shred it in the night. He will get trapped in there and shred it. Like, oh, I'm so my happy. God. That's the best part. That's the best news I think we have. I mean, no, not I'm not going to say that because obviously we both have other exciting news. But I think yes. you becoming a cat mom and watching that in the last like couple of weeks has been like my absolute favorite because you've been always so close to me and my babies. And yes. you've yes. always been so involved, like their children and you've got it. But now you like you get it now <laughs> oh i get it like i like sit there and stare at him sometimes and i'm just like i feel like i want to explode because i just love him so much and i'm just like oh my god like this is this is insane that this feels like this like he's so good he's so perfect he transitioned so well like he just came in and we were nervous to like pull him out from the couch because we just kidnapped him from where all him and his other cat friends were Totally. Um, so we just kind of let him do his own thing for the night, which was sad because he slept under the couch. We built like this whole thing for him. And then the next day he was on the couch and he was letting us come near him. And then, yeah, like now he sleeps at Ryan's head or on my chest yes. or between my legs. And like, he's just so funny. He's like, oh my God. And then he like, he runs to the door and meows when you come home. And he like, when you like go down to kiss him, he like, today he was like grabbing ryan's face with his paws and like oh. pushing his face i was like oh my god it's I literally it i i'm so glad you get it like you get it when you see other kids and and like oh. cats and animals but when it's your own pet and you're just like yeah, a part of them different yeah having their own personality and you see them like start to blend with your family and you're just like how is this creature from a completely different species like have this language like benjamin and they'll do that it's like they imprint oh. and, and where they sleep as babies is where they're gonna sleep forever like benjamin still yeah. like comes in and crashes on my chest and we spoon and then like we're just two peas in a pot oh. <laughs> i'm glad you get it now oh, and like so good yeah and so yeah that's been so fun to watch you and then i love that you also named him bruce like a real person as well like us because like our our cats are the same like they're just little humans <laughs> they are they are and it's so funny when you're calling them too because you're like calling like a, it's like a person's name like i have a girlfriend that's named her cat's name is paul and so yeah she, oh my like, gosh. She, let, she lets him outside and she'll be like yelling paul I'm like i'm like oh my god i, la I laugh every time uh, it's not like kitty or and those are great names but i've never yeah. been one i've always been like they need real names they're like my children so yeah when they say they're i have like children kids. i'm like oh jackson benjamin and sophie like those sound like real those life are my children babies. Yeah, those are my yep. babies no questions um but yeah so the glow up with the cat mom thing and, and cash is obviously going to be excited when he comes home he called me like i didn't want to wait to tell him so like there's no way i can wait two fucking months to tell this kid and i know how he is so we waited a couple days to tell him because we didn't want to tell him that we got him the day that he left because I was yeah. like oh that would be and then he was like oh my god he's just so just a mom how was he the cutest thing I've ever seen oh. he's like the cutest cat and so he, he would call like me he's... every day and then freaking yeah so now I it's been a couple days since I've talked to him but uh 
he loves him. He just, every time he calls, what's Bruce doing? What's Bruce doing, mom? What's Bruce doing? And I'm like, hi. Hi, I'm here too. (laughs) Fucking kids. Uh, I love that so much. I'm so glad. And it's perfect timing too, right? Like we talked about that. Like you wanted one for a while and it's, you kind of, it wasn't, you just, whatever, you're busy and going on different trips this year and all that kind of stuff too. So it just wasn't the time. And now it's like, you know, you've done all that. Cash is gone. Like what a perfect time to just settle in you know, without his friend. energy and have yeah. a friend, right? And kind of like a replacement. It's like you kind of replace one baby boy with another one right now for the time yeah. being. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love exactly. that. Exactly. And then so oh. let's talk about we went on lots of trips this year. So yes. first trip to Mexico was the engagement. Yeah. Let's yes. talk about that. Yay, guys. Yes. I don't want to say it. So yay. It's so exciting. Yeah. So much has happened since we've like, yeah, this whole year has been crazy for both of us. So we went to Mexico for the first time in December and that's when he proposed and it was the most epic story and I'll always remember it. And it's always going to be funny. Like it'll, I'll be like 80 hopefully and like laughing (laughs) about this because it was so funny. Um, that happened. And then we went to Vegas in March. Oh, we went to Mexico again in February. Yeah. So it yeah. was like Mexico, <laughs> like a double Mexico double just Vegas. us kids. And then so many things happened. So many silly things happened. Uh, fuck. And then we went to Port of, no, Cabo with the whole family. So we brought cash, which was insane. Like he was like, it was so cool to show him somewhere like that. Like to be able to take him. Um, and have him experience another part of the world. Uh, I think it's important for them to know that. So it was really cool to take him stressful as all hell. <laughs> yeah, he of course. Disappeared on us twice. <gasps> and I was like, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to decapitate him. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> I'm going to kill him myself. If you, and the worst part, like, the resort was like one thing because he just had gone around the corner down to the beach. That was like mm-hmm. one thing because we saw him and I was like, oh my God, thank God. But then we went into town to do an excursion and everyone went into the building and everyone came out except for cash. And I was like, oh, where the fuck is my bitch? Uh, that would where be... is cash? Uh, and knowing us and all the rabbit holes that we fall down, like, you know, you're like, Kate, don't do it. Don't go down those rabbit holes. We'll find him. And then, yeah, he was close. So it was good. But it was like explaining to him, like in a place like that, no fucking like if you're gone, you're gone. I like, I can't, I, there's really not much that can be done unless we see who takes you. Like, different country so, different people yeah, yeah that Canada was a really harsh reality for him like I still treat it Canada like that though like I'm yes, totally. that mom where I'm like you're still young enough that you need to be within arm's reach of mom so that you know I can just keep you safe from literally everything outside of the house like mm-hmm. well your last episode on here was talking about missing people in Canada and it's not gotten better if anything I'd it imagine definitely it's been has not gotten worse so it's like yeah absolutely within our own backyard now too and i'm like it's not a shade to the people necessarily that are coming into the country or necessarily yeah. i think the people that are on the you know like the streets or drug addicts like i think it's a combination of everything and it's been there and just the way of the world and how bad everything is like bad people are just showing up by the droves and running rampant yeah it's like a perfect storm almost so it's like yeah good good point it's like yeah it's not just in mexico that you need to worry about that anymore it's unfortunately here because for whatever like we know what reasons but people are having a hard time and they're reacting really fucked up and fucked up yeah it's it's fucked yeah so that's it's good it's good that you had that where it wasn't like a crazy scare like you know yeah little one oh my god i panicked though like immediately like my heart immediately like i'm like oh why and so now with the freaking cat like oh my god i'm like we have to take him to the vet tomorrow and i was just saying to ryan i'm like he has a sniffle what if he has pneumonia what if what if he has pneumonia and then, now you get it i'm like oh my god if something ever happens to you like and i'm so sad because i'm like we have to take you to get your shots tomorrow like he's mm-hmm. gonna fucking not like that yes it's it'll be a yeah and i feel oh, so blessed because my cats were so good up until like two three years ago then shit started to like happen that i was just like with sophie taking her to emergency vet and jackson getting dental surgery and like oh my God. even last week benjamin fell out of the closet and he like uh-huh. ripped a chunk of hair out of his back but i didn't know oh if my it was, God, like, yes right i showed pictures but it looked like it could yes. be a hot spot it looked like it could be allergies like maybe ri- like i really had no idea and i couldn't yeah. find a chunk of hair and so i left it because you know and grant's always like just chill like let yeah. them do let their thing be. for a bit and i'm always like yeah. 
hover parenting. And uh, then after a yeah. couple of days, it started to look red and crusty. And I'm like, this. And so I sent a picture, and they're like, it's hard to tell if it's just healing or a hot spot. And you just like, you don't want your pets to, like, they can't talk to you. I know babies yeah. can't, but like, kids eventually can talk to you and tell you their level of discomfort. Animals can't. And so Wait, I, no. I was going into the long weekend, and I was like, let's just go to the vet. And then she's like, I honestly think he just scratched himself. Like, he's not That's displaying great. anything. And, but then today, he gets this like, problem with his eye where it'll go red and then like like cry and it'll like look like it's like maybe his tear duct is backed up or he's got like oh, something bothering no. it and then i'll wait till the next day and it clears up well today it was so bad it like looked like it was inflamed and like he was like they have like a second eyelid and it comes from up what? here yeah so when if they go he goes yeah, to open yeah, his, yeah, I've seen that. oh my god I thought okay. Benji was dead when he was a kitten because he opened his first set and his oh. second one was closed. And I was like, where are your eyeballs? And I was like, what? Our cat is broken. He, and then he just like finally opened them up. I was like, I've never seen eyeballs do that. Oh. You learn a lot. And I, it's good. I'm so oh, glad that you're God. saying this because I just think it's because I haven't been a parent yet. That's that's why I'm freaking out like this. But I think that's just a cat mom thing. I think it's just a pet, pet oh. thing. It doesn't matter like the love kids. that I we have for these things. Oh. Is I hate leaving my house. Like I, I don't know. go to the gym as much now because I'm like, well, if I'm at work all day and then I go to the gym for an hour and a half, I'm only home for like two hours. So I'm just going to go to the gym on the days that I work from home. So yeah. I'll train downstairs. So the cats have company because Grant's gone too. Right. But like, yeah, it's a different people. Some people just get animals just to have them in the house. But like, I genuinely want my cats to have a good life. Like they only yeah. live, you know, up to 20 years. I want them to have the best life. Yeah, me too. I don't know, it's I'm, hard not to. I bought so many things now, and it's like, oh my god, I was like thinking about how to construct like this, this run on the wall, like of shelves. Oh, they'll love it, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm just, this is all I think about now. Like, I'll, I'll be at work, and I'm just like, I wonder what Bruce is doing. I wonder I what Bruce is up to. I wonder Probably gets the zoomies. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> He gets the zoomies and he goes flying in through like he's got like this four way tunnel yeah. and it's got holes and then windows. He oh, will perfect. go bailing through the window and then fucking zoom around and then fly out through on the other side. You'll get stuck playing with the ball. Like I'm just like hmm. How? I wish I had your energy, cat. I and, uh Oh I remember God. Benji one time he first gave him catnip. He came running upstairs and dove into his little tent. And I'm like, what are you doing? And I look and he's got the like catnip container in his mouth and he's trying to open it up. I was like, you like little shit. Like he's got orange cat behavior. Like it, it is just absolutely Aww. insane. So like, yeah, it's, I'm glad that you get it. And it's, I feel like it's an experience you can have throughout all of life. Like you could be a teenager yeah. and a kid and have a kitten. You could be, you know, an older adult and you still like an experience the joy yes. of having a kitten and like the it's magical. Oh, it's just so innocent and silly. And you're just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, what are you doing? Like he runs and like jumps with his like hind legs close together, but then with his uh, like front legs, like out spread. like this, like yeah. spread and like flies and like hooks at your legs and stuff. I'm just like this cat. Is he's going to get huge and yes. it's going to be insane if he does this one that big. I feel like he's going to be the same oh. size as Jackson because he's got quite thick like paws and legs. I think he's yeah. going to be a solid boy. He's going to be just like Jackson. Like, cat. Yeah, nice long hair and like just so and then when he runs, it's going to be like <laughs> majestic and blowing Very in majestic. the wind. Right? Yeah, oh, like a little dragon. God. And oh. I swear to God, he's like the cat version of Cash. When you sent a picture, I was like, dude, this is your son in a cat form. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, cat what did yeah. he ask me? He's like, um, is Bruce shifty like you? <laughs> and I was like, what? Well, he's a cat, so yeah. Yeah, he's shifty. He's so shifty. And he's like, that's, he just like loves it. He loves anything shifty. So I'm just oh, like, so it's a good thing. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Yes. And is he getting in? So let's talk about this last year. So I feel like to you, like I've seen massive growth and I know it's hard every single time that he's gone home, but I feel yeah. like every single year, it's like you kind of step more into who you are as Kayla versus like mom, which you had to be for so long. Right. Yeah. And I feel like every time he goes, it's like you evolve a little bit more, obviously still hurts, but would you oh, yeah. say that that's fair that like, you know, you optimize the time and then appreciate like you guys co-parent so well now, I think is what I'm yeah. trying to get to, right? And, and do you it's feel that way? Incredible. Yeah, I really do. It's, it's, it is absolutely incredible. Um, like we're, Brittany and I text, I text her, I check in how she's doing. Cause Tyler sometimes has to go out 
a town and do like little emergency jobs. So I'll check in. She's got all three kids. So I'm like, how's it going? Like, how you doing? Uh, but I think she's honestly like, she's such a good fit. Like, it is so funny when you think of like having a separation or whatever and having kids involved and wondering what the future is going to look like and how people like how it's all going to play out. So it's really awesome that we get along and we can like, she's very like minded. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. Like I really love that we're raising children together because it's like, she just adds that little bit extra, like, um, and then Tyler's like, um, Brittany's grand, like mother, like she's always there. I'm just like, this woman, like is relent, like, this is what, this is her life. Like, she dedicates her life and her time to her daughter and her grandbabies. And like, they're just both incredible people. So yeah, it's, he's over there living his life, um, taking care of his sisters and they're talking. And like, oh. when I see them on the phone, they're like the one, like one, it's so cute. It's just like, I'm going to try and do it without being an ass of myself. But she goes, <laughs> like, she says hi, but she whispers. She says, hi. Oh, that's so cute. Hi. And she's got little teeth and there's like blonde hair and I'm like, oh my God, they're just so precious. And then they know how to like, they know who Cash is. So they point at him and they're like, who, who, where's brother? And then they'll point at him and then they were trying to teach them who I was. And it was just like, it's just so cool when we FaceTime and there's like conversations. Like I'm like, I feel really grateful, honestly, like, yeah. that I have to say. So it's just like, it's not, it's still difficult for him to leave obviously and like that's like a given but that it's so nice to like be around people and talk to people who have kids or who don't have kids that are just like well that 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 must be all right for you you know like to have that kind of time and I'm like yeah actually I maximize as much of it as I can I do a lot of what I want to do or the things that we you know we don't generally do because we got so much routine happening in the house so it's nice to kind of break great. away from that a little bit and yeah, I'm taking singing lessons, so yeah. it's, that's exciting. But it's so like, exciting. oh, this is really cool. Um, so she's gonna be famous by the next year. This episode, you hear it here first. Teach me how to song write. <gasps> oh, I got chills. So I I'm really pumped about that. So yeah, yeah like they, I have I, yourself. Yeah, and I have time to do like I have more time to do things like like catch up like this. Like this is mm. so instead of you know I used to get really upset and it was really difficult. And I was like because I did, I did, I identified so hard with being a mom that I forgot outside of being a mom who I was. So this time has been over the past few years, really incredible to have, to have the opportunity to just discover like what I am about and what I need and, you know, have that time with just my fian now fiance. Like yeah. it's just a little break from the school year, which is long. <laughs> yes. Yes. And too, I think that's such a beautiful point because I don't think that I think a lot of people went and had kids and not to be rude or anything, but went and had kids, but they weren't maybe able to heal something or fix certain things. And you're just so busy all the time doing everything for everyone else and being in that mom mode. It's like on autopilot. Auto, exactly. And like your shit doesn't matter. Like put it aside, put your big girl pants on and be put mom. That over there. Right. And so when you came to that first separation where cash was going for a long period of time, you had to sit and like, okay, who's Kayla now after all of like shit, like, you know, like you had your shit growing up and your trauma and like your teenage mm -hmm. years and then early 20s, you're a mom and all that. And now you're coming out and you're like, OK, especially after your accident, like, OK, what am I doing? Yeah. What, you know, and I think for you, you're just very confused. Like you said, you were just always that survivor and that hard worker and that mom that's just go, go, go. And then all of a sudden that wasn't there. And you're like, what is my purpose? Do I have a purpose? What exactly and then you had purpose? the pandemic. I'm not trying to laugh by any means, but it's like, girl, you didn't even have a second. It was just like you're starting to like dive probably into like who you are and the pandemic's like face it now nope. <laughs> yeah like you got no choice and then now you every year I feel like you like you said coming into more and more who you are and I was actually sitting at the beach the other day watching some kids being absolute terrors like I'm sorry like I have decent patience for children but these kids were like hitting each other and and oh, maybe no. that's like and like jumping on other people's stuff and just being like super disrespectful and I just was kind of like you know Co-parenting sometimes is probably nice when you have like, you just need a break, you know, and you just want to yeah. go to the beach and relax for a minute. Like, I'm not trying to be that way, but if you can see the beauty, like you said, that like Brittany adds to that, right? Like more people yeah, and more absolutely. community, more grandparents, more aunts and uncles, more friends for the most part, I think really do add to their lives. And if we can just kind of take the politi politics and the bullshit out of like, let's say like the relationships with the parents and focus on what's best for the kids and we could just show up like I know easier said than done 
you know, I really think that that's beautiful because I look at like even my own life, like my parents didn't really talk shit about each other. They just kind of like let me experience who they were as adults with my own experience, not by yeah. their lens. Right. And I think you are very much about that too. Like your relationship, you know, as your relationship, we, we think we've talked about this before. Um, but I just think it's beautiful when you can kind of work through that, put that aside and see the highlight because kids don't get that shit. They just see more yeah. family, more love, more yeah. attention. Right. And it's like, I just think it's so exciting when blended families can do it and, and then get excited about it. And then it's not just like tolerating like a, business professional which i think mm -hmm. people should be if they can't be like loving you should at least be business professional <laughs> yeah absolutely easier said than done i get there's like definitely like abuse situations and i'm not saying that but like totally. majority, i think majority we could say yeah. like could probably and, like lean it's that great because they'll like if there's a half like stuff going on at school like there's four of us to kind of like yeah. sit down and talk about what we want to do Mm -hmm. So it's like almost a little bit like strength in numbers sometimes, you know, so it's, totally. it's, it's, I like that. And we're on the same page with pretty much everything. So it's, I really can't complain. And I feel like for everything that happened and the way it all went down and all that crap, like it's, we're very lucky all, and I feel grateful. So it's like, it's awesome to be in that place to say that. And I, I feel like I've said that before on the show, but it just keeps yes. getting better and better. And, you know, Ryan and I will get married and have our own, like have our own child eventually. So I'm Is like, that a Bruce? yeah, it's baby Bruce, baby Bruce. Upstairs, baby Bruce wants to the upstairs family wants to get a cat now. Yes. They love him so much. They keep coming down to see him. Like yours, she's so great because she checks on him all when, when, she, when we're at work. So he's not like alone all day. And yes. I'm just like, it is such a relief. I'm not even joking. Like when I get to work from home, I'm like, okay, I know I'm working, but they're all sleeping in my office. So it's like, I'm here. They feel like supported. They can have good sleeps because mom's here. And like, you just, yeah. you do, you feel good. And then when people care about your pets, like when we go away, like we have people come and stay, not just like check in, yeah. like stay in the house so that the cats don't feel so alone. And yeah, Aww. I just, I, I love it. And um, to your point too, like it's strength in numbers and it's also giving a chance to look at different perspectives that you might not have because of how you yeah. were raised, which, you know, everyone in this circumstance, you know, is going to be different. And there's four different perspectives of being like, well, Hey, when I was a kid, I kind of experienced this. So maybe that's what he's going through too. Yeah. Right. So I feel like it just is like more education, more knowledge to, um, help cash navigate all these stuff as a family. And then he sees that and he's seeing all these like healthy relationships healthy breakup for the most part right like he's, he's yeah. seen what it is now and to now you know that i think you know that going forward when he goes to go into relationships he's going to attack it the same way right like with like much respect and like and maturity and just how he's seen it kind of like you know very professional and kind and like understanding and open and i think you guys have been very open and i think that's great yeah. i think I hope that for all the blended families that are out there because there's a lot and I just feel like that's one thing as a child of divorce that irks me is when kids get used as pawns yeah, yeah. in adult uh, bullshit. It just, yeah. it actually, but, I fucking, I have to backspace so much on social media sometimes. I'm yeah. like, get out, not your monkey, get not out, your circus. Get out, get out. Oh <laughs> is, my God. Is that how you feel, especially as someone who's like come through it and like, you yeah. know, knows that it's possible? You're just like, okay, hey guys, come on. Yeah, and I mean, like, it was, like I said, like, it's not always easy. You really have to, like, pull yourself out of your own pit and think about what's important. And I just have always had a very strong family value, core value. So I value my family. And um, I just, I didn't want my son to grow up the way that I feel like I grew up. I didn't want him to be angry and hate things. And I think another really important huge bonus of this whole thing and the way it's working is teaching him unanimously that duality exists mm -hmm. he can live with mom and miss dad and then visit dad and love being with dad and still miss mom that yes. that is okay that, yeah does have to I pick think, yeah so that i think is one of probably the most important things that i would say that i, I think is just the greatest about that is mm -hmm teaching him that that complex emotions can exist in, in the same instance because yeah. that was something I didn't fucking know and yeah, it's one way it or the other with me my whole life and now yes. that I know that it's like totally normal I'm like though when that shit happens that just rolls off my fucking shoulders I'm like oh okay that's fine it's good it's good 
Yes. Does it feel like everything's a decision and that you have yeah. to like pick something, right? And it's like you have to have one. It's like you're a fairy and you can only handle one emotion at once. And it's like, oh. no, but you could be a bunch of things. Like you can break up with someone that was an absolute fucking asshole and you deserve better, but you could still miss them as a person Absolutely. and miss the good things. That's why you probably stayed so long, right? Or yeah. however that works, right? Like you could be at a really, you know, leave a job that you loved everybody around it, but the boss was a complete fucking asshole and was just making your life a living <laughs> hell, you know? Oh, sorry, I didn't. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's personal to both of us, but you know, like, um, but you know, it, it's it, two truths can exist at the same time. And you're right. That is such a lesson that I think both of us only learned later in life. And then our egos were so driven by like, and I think mine during the pandemic was it really got faced at where I was just like, and even now I'm still very now backtracking to some of the things that I'm like, this is a hundred. I fucking know this. That is facts to being like, this is what I feel like is to be true. And I'm not going to be crumbled if i'm proven right or wrong like it is yes. what it is right it's yes. so yes. nice like levels of ego death right just when you think you've yeah. killed it it shows its face and you're like mother fuck <laughs> and you've gone through this that this year <laughs> oh my god it's been Sorry. ongoing it feels like <laughs> there's just one oh. lesson i feel like just keeps repeating for you over and i'm like what i feel like you're learning every time so why does this situation keep appearing like oh uh, but we all have that one if we all have that one <laughs> but look how much you've grown like we've talked every single time that we, i feel like it's so fun every time we text we're like our biggest text lately i don't know if you've noticed the pattern is like our noticing of how much we've grown in a certain yes. circumstance yeah. like do you notice that lately yeah. it went from like full-blown all conspiracies which was fine and like bitch yeah. but now it's just like girl i went through this situation and i acted different and i just wanted to share how proud i am yeah. of myself <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's actually really great. That's one of the, like, one of my favorite things about our friendship and how it all began and how we, like, flourished together. And we always come back to that. It's always, like, that's why I want to share those moments with you because you get it. Like, yeah. we grew through some hard, crazy shit together. We, like, held hands through COVID the whole time, <laughs> like, you know? So that, if I, I don't know, dude, if I hadn't have fucking had you and we had to, like, did the shit that we did, like, I might, I don't know what I'd be like. I don't know if I'd be the same right now. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. just like super cool when you're like, oh, a bitch got silly and I didn't <laughs> fucking punch her out. You're like, yeah. oh my God. Oh. I'm so proud of you. Oh, Kayla would be in jail. Just kidding. Oh, but yeah. it's true though. And that's such a good point. And like, and maybe that's a fun thing that we could go back to is like, you know, I think in every single season now, again, coming to the end of this season, I'm thinking about the next one. And I'm like, what are my intentions? You know, like yeah. what I started, what we started the show with was like you said, that we just grabbed each other's hands and we're like, let's fucking don't go down our spiritual awakening together. We've got it together. Yeah. Like, I think we both were at that point where we're like, there's stuff about ourselves that we want to face. And we know that by being completely brutal and honest and talking about some topics, I don't think we fully knew until the first season when we started actually talking about this being like, oh, this is triggering to talk about. And like, yeah. you know, and you were going through the healing with your fucking concussion at the same time and like going through a lot. Uh -huh. And I guess, I guess me and Grant were too, like all the different jobs and stuff and then yeah. the pandemic. But yeah, I don't know, dude. Like, I don't think I would be as positive and happy. Like, I think we both had to go through I think you have to go through that. I think you have to go face the truth, see the darkness, not feel like you could get out, sit with that a little bit and then start being like, okay, you know what? Like even now I just don't entertain some conversations um, that, that I used to have. And I don't want to take any episodes that we ever did. I will never take anything back. I will never, none of yeah. that. But as I'm going, as I'm saying, like, as I'm going into the final, like, cause you know, I promised 10 seasons. So as I'm looking at the last chapter of the show, I want to get back to, yeah, all those personal conversations and those experiences. I love the conspiracies. I love cult talk. I love, you know, all that. But it's a human connection piece that yeah. is just like unfound joy that it brings me. It's just like talking yeah. to people and, and the people that I've met through all of that. The and stories honestly, that you've heard. Like, yeah, I wouldn't have had that if you weren't like my back. Like, I just needed someone that was going to fucking stand up beside me. I was like, yeah. I could do all of this. I, I just need that. someone to fucking like back me up on social media. If these motherfuckers come for me and I was like, and then you're like, let's go. And I was like, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. And that's, and now I never, even if you've not been here and you'd always have wonder if people think like, Oh, all well, the girls leaving is they're like, call her daddy drama. Like 
never there has no. never been any drama like with this show just, yeah it's just timing right but it was just like I just needed someone to start it with me and then my hope yeah. was that you guys would all get a piece of something out of it no matter how long you were here whether you were here the whole time or you know just supporters in the end or show up you know Haley's been on the season too I'll have to get D back when yeah she's uh when she's done doing her fun thing I'll leave for her to share for everyone but um yeah yeah it's it's not been like that it's just been like oh uh, it was perfect I think for every host for the time that it was you know what I mean yeah like, exactly and again like it was really cool just to have like like-minded people that you like you could just the most insane shit would happen or you would see the craziest shit online and we could like communicate about it without being chastised there was like and not everybody always had the same opinion which was also nice like sometimes you and I didn't have the same opinion and then when Haley and Danielle got involved like it was just like it was cool there was like and you know not like a round table but like a, like the all four points like it yeah I don't it was it was great it was it saved me honestly it saved my life it saved me from just going off the deep end and losing my shit and oh girl yeah <laughs> it was fuck you're making me cry um, <laughs> yeah that's amazing though because that's what i feel like too i think both of us are at a point where yeah we just needed that and i think we needed that in the friendship too like someone that yeah. wasn't gonna yeah, fuck yeah, around that wasn't gonna be patient and understanding oh i didn't realize that i was gonna I, get my, I must be getting my period just kidding oh. um <laughs> no because i think for me it's like i have that imposter syndrome sometimes right like people can yeah. say to you all the time like oh keep doing it but then like you know all the difficulties that come with going through this and now yeah. having my uh instagram and social media taken down again it's just kind of like holy fuck like what am i doing this for so like thank you yeah. because then it makes me do realize like no like it did put a good a good spin on a lot of things oh, for people dude. i think yeah it just i think i like to think of it as like such a neat little thing that happened that especially when we started bringing other people on we started listening to their stories like yeah. that's when it was i so i know what you mean by that that feeling of like letting someone share something that they maybe have not felt like could share or it took them a long time to be able to share it or maybe it still triggers them when they share it, but like to be able to give people a platform where they can just come and be very real, right? Like it that it I, it was special. It's still special. Yes. It's always gonna be special. I'm like, it's yeah. I don't know. I hope that like our guests feel like that too, because I yes. that's how it made me feel. It was a a way for me to share my story and a way for me to like chronologically, like you would put it like the years and everything that's happened and all the growth and evol evolution and you can see it in the history of the show so yes and then just moving on with our friendship so it's really yes. it's yeah it was it was it was a game changer yeah and that's a, a good point like especially like let's say for like holly holly's been here from the beginning yes. she's in the first couple episodes and she's been on a guest so i said even for her she can digitally watch her growth every yeah. year and every season that she's been on the show and just everybody let's say that comes on and like for example the episode two before us with amber with her book like it's publishing yeah. in september like i can't wait to have her back and be like how is publishing a book and i think one of the most pivotal um interviews or the spots that I liked the most uh, going back to your point are the roundhouses that we would have with Haley and Dee because I feel like all four of us even though we're super aligned with stuff we all had different experiences that brought yeah. us to that conclusion specifically when we talked about like weight and body yeah. size and body dysmorphia and things like that where we all were coming to the same conclusions of how we were sold bullshit and how each of us being in completely different bodies and situations and being grown up and having the exact same feeling at the end of the day. And I think that it really showed commonality and, you know, that that we're not alone. And, and not to sound like a dick, it's like <laughs> we don't all have very unique experiences. Like we all go through it. So don't feel like yeah. you're personally being attacked by the universe or the world and look at it as, as like these are the lessons that you're choosing to learn on your soul contract while you're yeah. here and you have to just unfortunately go through it and that's why we have community and real talk to help you get through it faster to heal to not feel so like victimized Ooh, it's just three, yeah. three 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 on the thing when i said that um ooh. you know ooh. and uh so i think that that for us was like very important because we were realizing as we were sharing like okay i have anxiety and i've had bouts of depression but i don't think i'm clinical because it sounds like maybe you had it a little bit more but like when it comes to this, I was definitely, you know, and it was just, it was just yeah. so cool. And I think one of the biggest things that was for me, that was huge meeting you is that you were adopted. 
and yeah. I was going through, or that you are, not that you are, not that that had changed. <laughs> um, because for me, it was just a very big moment of like the miscarriages and not understanding and like just really not understanding what adoption could look like. And, you know, you yeah. just hear all these stories and all the conspiracies. And then it was just like, then I seen you and I heard your story and like seeing how like your life completely got changed you know, by Debbie and all that kind of stuff. And not yeah. that your dad didn't have it, but we'll just, you know, we're going to say Debbie. Uh, and, uh, you know, how that, how beautiful that was for you. And even though you still acknowledge that you had a painful childhood and you still had stuff to heal, the duality of having that. And then also by contrast, having these parents that came to save you and understanding that both yeah. can exist, I think was probably where you battled your identity of being like, you know, abandoned by your birth mom and all those kind of things versus like being saved, right? You would like yeah. probably felt guilty for being, mad about that when you did have like you know good parents you didn't yeah, want them tough. to feel that it was tough for sure I don't think it was talked about much so and then you know I I, I don't even know what like it's so funny like I always dabbled in trying to figure out if I wanted to find her mm-hmm. and it was always out of a place of anger and so I just put that out of my mind I was like you know what I've kind of I think I'm just gonna make peace with that and like Oh, and then there was this fucking Facebook video, dude. Oh, my God. I'm pretty sure I told you about this, but there was a Facebook video that was someone interviewing a lady that I think was on the streets mm-hmm. and talking to her about what it was like, or she was in prison, sorry, maybe not from the streets, but she was definitely in prison, um, and asking her what it was like having her baby in prison and then having her baby taken away. And I, I was like, whatever, for whatever reason, I usually just never watch that shit. And I just click through it or whatever. I just, whatever. But this one, I was like, hold up. And I watched the entire thing. And I, rem- I remember fucking bawling after it. Because I was like, I never even fucking thought of how she might have felt. Mm-hmm. So it was like a moment of clarity and peace. And also like a major like relief of like, I don't have to hold this anger anymore. Like, I don't have to be mad. I can be upset at the decisions that were made, but also be compassionate because I don't know what she was going through. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like two truths truths shook me. me. And I remember when you're like, yeah, I do want to know. Right. And like that happened when the first season of the show, didn't it? Was it first or second season? I want to say it was the first season of the show when you're going through that. And you're like, yeah, I just made this decision. And like, so and then I got just... all those papers from my mom. Yeah. Like my, yeah. my Debbie sent me like a box of like my case files. And it was just kind of like uh, the suspicions that I had kind of just were literally just answered. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of like, how can you be angry and hate somebody that you have no idea what happened to them to get them to those places? Because you go outside and I'm sure it's in Kelowna now, but you can't oh, go anywhere without seeing people on the streets. So it's yeah. just, you can't, I, I, I always try to remind Tash that too. Like you don't know what got them there. Yeah. You know, yeah. some people, we try to be very real. Some people get there because something bad happens and they fall down the path and they end up hooked on these drugs and they will do after a while, like really your brain can only tolerate so much of it before it becomes like clinically addicted to whatever the substance is. So, uh yeah or you can be a perfectly normal person and just like i don't know just shit happens and you know what i mean so it's just it's like you can't i blame pharmaceuticals a lot for that too you know like you hear so many people that go in for surgeries or going for this and then all of a sudden like y'all know i was addicted to tylenol 3 like i can completely relate i did very bad things that are out of character to get those tylenol 3s like you know and it's like, what level do you decide that the, like it's a bad addiction, right? Just because you can yeah. hide it and you're not on the streets doesn't mean you're not doing bad things to get that, right? So like, I feel completely compassionate um, and I had to really back myself off of it, but I was only on Tylenol 3. I couldn't imagine getting like the heavy stuff for an accident and like how many people are waiting for surgeries, how many people are, you know, being diagnosed with things that they can't get help. So they're just pain pills pain pills pain pills and then all of a sudden like they can't work and then they don't have benefits and then now they're leading to street drugs and like people can call me crazy but i truly believe that is where majority of street addiction start are from pharmaceuticals or something in that realm i I love how they try to blame cannabis as the gateway drug and i'm like y'all 
I feel like <laughs> pharmaceuticals are a gateway drug to harsher re- recreational drugs, in my personal opinion, because I've been smoking weed for a long time. And not once did I think, hey, meth would be such a good idea right now. Like right? not fucking once. Like cannabis is always and will always be enough. So yeah. I think we need to look at things like, I don't know, Chem- clinically made meth that's maybe making people you know like it, it's just and it's so sad and like you said there's there's this really bad stigma and I get it because there are people that get themselves there and they do not choose to have the help and I understand that but at the same time there's a big load of people that like just are or people right now are one paycheck away one broken arm one car accident one bounce check from being in the same position because of the fucking country that we live in right now yeah and it's so fucking sad and so like good for you for teaching cash you know like compassion of like we just don't know so it's just probably easier not to 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 place judgment and just you know if they're not hurting you then keep away if they are hurting you though like in harassment like there is unfortunately there is some aggression that is kind of happening a little bit more and more like i don't feel safe going downtown Kelowna, which never used to be a problem we went and did a photo shoot two weeks ago it was like sunday at like six six thirty and i used to be able to just like drop my camera bag and like take pictures around the area and like that was not happening and there's several times where i was like on the ground shooting and they're just be like getting very close like stuck and like straight like it was just very it made me feel very uncomfortable um one of my girlfriends actually got drugged at a bar uh, about a month ago um and when i was walking wow. home yeah when i was walking home i went my car was parked at like city park like at the main beach there downtown and someone had fucked with my mirrors and of course knowing all the things that we know my head is going a mile a minute like did someone take my car are they gonna follow me home why did they fuck with my mirrors that doesn't really make any sense like and then i was like should i not touch my car because you hear that they'll put stuff like and it really just sucked that my brain went to all of those places when i've never felt that in my entire life of living in canada very privileged i understand that but I've been in Vancouver, I've been to Victoria, like yeah. Port Alberni is not the nicest place. Nanaimo has this really bad shit. I used to do a bunch of drugs and go down but downtown Vancouver and I never felt as scared as I felt a couple weekends ago. So I actually canceled yeah. going out for a birthday a while ago because Grant wasn't home and I was like, I don't feel comfortable driving down and I don't drink, so I'm going to be driving. Like, I don't feel comfortable now drinking or, or yeah. going downtown without him or someone that's like a partner with me. And that sucks because I've never felt that way before. Yeah. So it just i mean but bc keep regular like keep putting those drugs out and making sure that drug addicts are doing drugs safely because that's really helping super them. ideal yeah how's victoria is it like gotten worse over the last couple of years oh, yeah. too yeah oh yeah i can imagine like, and it's where is where's like your area of like pandora Tennessee? street but okay. uh like it, it's insane because there's like this I don't know if it's a like what it is if it's a church but there's like this building that's been gated off for like forever mm-hmm. it might even still be open they just have it gated off because of obvious reasons um yeah. but all the tents are from like a whole street like long from one and it, that's just kind of where they are but they've kind of it, they've kind of gone everywhere now like yeah. they're just all it's over the city yeah yeah so there's it there isn't really yeah um it's just so sad. Like, I don't know what the answer is. And I've said that several times. Like, I have yeah. no idea what the answer is, but it's got to be better than what we're doing right now. Like, I just, it, we have like the whole rail trail, which I, I, if you come up here this summer, I'll have to show you. It's not like one block. It is like a rail trail. Like it is wow. where people are going to ride their bikes to go to Knox and the water and that whole, which like, you know, it's kind of kept to itself. Like they have this whole line and it's like that area. So it's like very much like they can keep to themselves and like, but still like yeah. it just, it just makes you so sad. And like, it fucking pisses me off that like Trudeau comes here and like, doesn't even go and visit that. He goes like when the fires are here, I get it going to see mamas for mamas, but like not addressing the homeless issue that's there, but yeah. talking about the Barbie movie and like, yeah, fires that sucks. And I'm not just like, but like, homeless is how like it's it's increasing and it's getting worse and worse and worse every every fucking year yeah. and i yeah. just don't i don't know how to fix it but it, whatever we're doing i think is not helping the prices of everything like i can't even this is one thing that i really want to dive into is like how bad pricing of shit has gone like you know you have cash and you do, like you know i'm I, I don't know what people do with more than one or two children like i know are, are they expensive because i feel like they are <laughs> yeah like everything uh, basically like diapers cost money right um formula if you do formula 
um, daycare if you choose to go that route. Like it's it it is. So I yeah, it's I don't even know what it's gonna look like going forward with having like more. Hopefully something in Canada changes and like we see le- a little less of intense inflation like we are it's and taxes through the roof like how many Jesus. fucking more taxes are we going to have like when are we just going to uh, understand that they're not spending our money correctly and they can throw as much taxes as this as wants like i don't know if people didn't like i'm not i'm not good at math and i'm not good at budgeting but i do know if i spend more than i'm getting in like that's a problem so maybe we should look at that that instead of just increasing how much we're putting in like yeah. i don't know i had a boss one time that told me like i was like yeah well bills are getting like I, I need to pay more my bills are getting more and he's like it's not my business how you manage your money and i was like point point but it is getting insane man like yeah. I, like we were going to go down and drop my mom off to vancouver and stay the night just for like an us trip and we started pricing it out and i was like that's going to be like $1,200 just to drive down to Vancouver, have like all of our meals down there, stay the night, drive back. Like, you know, let's say an easy thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, a flight right now is like, even max is like $250. And I'm like, since when did like driving become the more expensive thing to do? It used to be the cheap route and now nothing is cheap. Nothing. Scary. Um, but let's talk about work quickly because i think yes had you were you at the job that you're at now or just started no. when you're on your last episode or was that more summer has it been a year wait, yet wait 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 um i started okay. april 2023 okay so it's just been over a year then yeah yeah that's awesome and i'm loving it still yeah i i do like it's i love what i do i don't know it's just and it, the like the people that are like normal are really great <laughs> We all have them. I'm in the cannabis industry, I mean. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? At the end of the day, just remembering that you're not gonna like everybody, but knowing how to be civil and be an adult in a city mm-hmm. like we all work in the same yard. So it's just like if we could just get to that point where it's like we can work here and not be best friends but also not be like wishing death upon each other, like that's yes. That might be all right. That might that might be you know? Yeah. Yes. So that right. blew yeah. my mind. Like working there and a couple of instances that have happened i'm just like bitch better I didn't expect that. Up. <laughs> yeah I'll i just... didn't expect that for you because i was like oh i think like this will be less for her in that sense you know where you're confronted with maybe some of those like situations i was like yeah. i feel like there's gonna be less of that and then all of a sudden i'm like how how is that like matching level here or like a little bit above but it's again cheating. lessons right eating yeah absolutely and lessons like, oh and honestly Trust me, like, after that, just so good at setting a boundary and being, like, absolutely the fuck not. Yes, yes. Don't cross that. Like, this is the line in the sand. Do not cross it. Like, yep. Not asking for much. Like, you know, mutual respect or just don't bother wasting my time. Yeah. And one big thing for me is that, like, even though the other person might not act that way, lately I've been very much of being, like, there was a quote I seen a while ago, and I said this on the last episode, like, every girl we meet is you know, healing the inner girl inside, right? So yeah. when we show up and we both know this is being mirrors, right, of people when you're growing and exceeding in those areas that other people aren't and they're seeing that you're doing it, they get mad at you sometimes if they're not ready to face that, right? Yeah. It's just like a jealousy of the growth or whatever that they're not even probably consciously aware of. And so like, I've been trying to understand that like when I'm having maybe adversity at work and I'm trying to like, why is this person being such a butthead? And then I'm yeah. like, okay, dial back for a second like pull your per- and I'm not saying you do this but like I've had to pull myself like okay are you personally getting mad because of x y and z like you know obviously we want to hold accountable yeah. but I'm also trying to not th- take everything personally I think is what it is it's like yeah okay I'm triggering you and I hate that word now so fucking much but you know I, I'm, I'm <laughs> you're you're projecting on me and and, and I'm I'm going to evaluate and I don't think I'm a problem. I'm showing up authentically how I think I should. I feel aligned. So this is really just a you problem. And I'm just going to be like, okay, cool. Um, If you don't want to grow, then I'm going to leave you where you at. No shade, no harm. But I'm not going to sit here and try to match by dropping down because that's not where I am. And one day I hope that you'll rise up and heal from this lesson and we can like vibe. But until then, I'm not letting you pull me down. I think the pandemic really did that to me too. Um, And I've really been noticing this lately, like, and I think we've talked about this too, people that we're maybe like really aligned with during the pandemic, 
just understanding yeah. that they're different people too and we don't necessarily love everything that they're saying and that's okay but also yeah. not to stand these people like I think I don't know for yourself but for me through the pandemic I was like really like this person knows what they're talking about like you know yeah. and then all of a sudden I'm seeing stuff like and no shade to like Dr. Campbell let's say like Bradley Campbell I love yeah. his content I follow a lot of the stuff that he says and for a long time I was like he knows everything he is you know and then yeah. I followed this other account that was like calling him out for some things and the way he handled it I was like I didn't mm. love that. Um, okay. And so it's just like a lot of realization that nobody's perfect and everyone's just here doing their own thing. And I think if we can take those situations now that we don't need to react into anymore, because we're yeah. like, that's a you problem. And I don't Ooh. have to sit here and have you validate that it's you a problem. My validation and understanding is enough for me. Yeah, it's kind exactly. of like how I feel, how you oh. have handled that for sure. Did Bruce get down here? Just no, no. Uh -huh. I, uh, I had to close him out. Yeah, I was, he, he would have been all over and I would have been, yeah, it would have been. Uh, I love uh, it. Okay. Haley's cats used to do that to us too. Um, But yeah, it's just been so awesome watching the last year and watching everything that, you know, you've done and, and, um, and our friendship and like the zero expectation to just always like have to be there and like, but always knowing that each other's there, you know, yeah. I think is probably like the greatest thing and watching like you know I went through this time sober you went through the time sober you know like you switched your career path of like when you're going to school and what you're doing when we first met to like where you are yeah. now and it's just I don't know it's so fun having friendships where you're honest to goodness just cheering each other on and like yes not afraid to brag about the personal wins because that other person is just so excited for you over the jealousy of like yeah oh she's great because I'm like okay cool she's growing there that's inspiring me I want to go there too but yeah. like I'm still growing here and that's okay. And I'm not less than, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's just never yeah. been that with us. And it so hasn't. Like, Thanks, man. Been, yeah. They, honestly, it's been so good. Like, like we always, yeah, like we always text, like it's been incredible to have all that and to like, to be now be where we are, like both entering our wifey era. Ooh, I love it. That's so exciting. And like, I was like, what? How cool. Same month too. Yeah. Like, I, was, I, I was like, like, like just so you know, I had this plan too. It wasn't because Kayla did. And he's like, I was like, I no, no, he would have had to have to have it planned. <laughs> he showed me like, I figured she's like, see on the receipt when I bought it. And I was like, it doesn't matter, man. I was like, I the fact that. that we're doing it at the same time, like I, even if it, I, after seven years, you just stop stressing yeah. out when other people get engaged, right? Like not to be rude, but you're just like, you set yourself up to be upset. And it's like, don't put that pressure on him. Like yes. it'll happen. So I was really floored because I was just like, no, because that's Kayla's him? turn. Yeah, Did like I was, and then him? no, not at all. No, okay, not at all. So no. Surprised. Yes. Yeah. It was oh. my last. It was my last Christmas present. So like I was like in the middle of building my last present. Like I was just like not even in that headspace. It was just like like I said because I used to always every Christmas be like, oh, I wonder if this is the year or like we go somewhere and I'm like, oh, I wonder if it and it just yeah. like led to disappointment that shouldn't have been existed because I was putting this expectation on him that shouldn't have existed. Cause I didn't yeah. really care. It's just cause the it's next still step. Exciting, right? right? It's yeah. Exciting. And you want that, you want that moment. But at the same time, I'm like, all oh, that move moments over, you know? So yeah. understanding that like, you know, and of course, did I have to work through that the minute that you got engaged? Of course, I'm a human being. I'm like, yes. everyone gets jealous right off the bat. It's like, oh, oh my God, yes. So much excitement for you, but it's just like, oh, damn, I want that too. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it happened. I was like, oh, now me and my best friend get to go through Bright Era together. Like, right. fucking A Cotton. I love this. And like, yeah, oh, just interesting it's, about it too. It's, yeah, like it's, it's been cool. Yeah. And so, like, I think my message is, guys, like, when we started this, we had no, and I still don't claim to know what I'm fucking doing, but I'm doing it. And doing it. I'm doing it. And the thing is, is like, you just got to go for things and you don't have to think that you're professional. And, um, and like, I don't know, just jump in and honest, real talk and yeah. not being afraid of being judged, like find that person because like your spouse will do that for sure. But like, it's a different level, right? Your spouse loves you on a different oh, level, right? Yeah. Your best friends are. Yeah. And so it's like, don't be afraid to share yourself with the world, with everything. Cause look at how much it brought us. Okay. Like imagine if we yeah. didn't do this, would we be able to have healed from the darkness that we had? I'm sure we have, but like as fast as we did, are we on naked? Do we have a yeah. naked man oh, coming in? in his underwear. <laughs> yes. He I knows I'm it. recording, but <laughs> he wanted his mom. Is this, are you guys coming out? Do you have an OF page? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> this is where you'll see it. This is where you'll Oh, right. now dropping link in bio just kidding um but yeah no it's just been amazing and like again like I think both of us have been eternally grateful and always come back to like 
why we started this show was to connect and the ripple effect of of, of all of that. And yeah. so like, thank you for being, you know, my best friend through all of this, this whole experience. And like, yeah, like I, you know that you're always welcome to come back on the show whenever. I'm always excited to have you here, but that never changed our friendship. And that was one thing I think like, you know, guys, if you ever do an adventure with a friend, passion project, business, like you have to be honest with each other. And my first thing to the girls yeah. were like, don't ever, if this is ever a bad feeling, get the fuck out and go away. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> like jump yeah. off this fucking ship because your friendship yeah. is so much more important than this podcast, even though this means the world like you girlies have yeah. been the reason why I could do what I do this and so like any moment that you guys give me any support is always like met with such gratitude I hope you guys know that yeah I I do I feel it I feel it I'm like because yeah it's so mutual for me and you. like I think hope, hopefully all of us but of course yeah. I absolutely do feel that yes good and so guys like I said like put your whole heart in it say it with your whole chest like don't be afraid to be honest because the more honest you are with yourself with the people around you the less anxiety is for everyone, for yourself. You're not pretending to be someone you're not. And you'll find people will be like, oh, you think you have body dysmorphia? Well, hold my beer. Or, you know, like, so yeah, it's just yeah. don't get away from this perfect keeping up with the Jones bullshit. We gave that up years ago. It's not real. It's not real. That is not Why? real. And we can show you guys right now can go back to season one, even listening to how nervous we were, you know, in the first episode and how different things are like. You can grow to start now because time's going to pass. So Kayla, Kay, thank you so much, my love, for joining me for the season finale. Oh, what a good feeling to hear that. <laughs> I know. I'm like, yes, done. I got a break for a month. No, I'm just kidding. I love this shit. But I'm excited for a break. And yeah, hopefully I can uh, have you back sometime in season eight. Now that Cash Melon is growing up, hopefully maybe one night he's uh, doing adult things almost now and driving around with his friends. Oh, no, not yet. He's just just getting into basketball so we'll see how i'm now entering sports mom era as well <sighs> that is so fun and that's what i mean but i think everyone loves to see you i love to see you even though i get to I talk to you more i love it more so you're always open to it but guys as always thank you for listening okay thank you for joining me and i guess i'll see you next season uh yeah. in a month yeah okay bye guys Thank you guys so so much for the support i cannot thank you enough for being here if you like this episode and you want to hear more please give me a follow at the be real babe podcast on apple spotify youtube rumble and pinterest you can also find me on facebook at the be real collective until next time guys bye